Um, I first met Daniel Rose when we were both creative writing students working on our MFAs at the Ohio State University uh, many moons ago. We became fast friends, but even more quickly than our friendship formed, I learned that Grove's work was the real thing. It's complicated, formal, measured, historical, language-altering, risky, weaved and wound, ironic and vulnerable. In short, I was stunned and still am by Dan's fantastic, to quote Willard Spiegelman's, out of mouth filling, eye popping, and ear ringing phrases. For any fans in here of Kanye West, that artist has nothing on Grove's ability to rhyme. Rhymes like New Bohemia with Functional Bulimia, Communion with Ruin In, Self Knowledge We with Tautology. His ear is a miraculous machine, and whether his poems are busy bearing a beloved dog or tripping around the stacks in the library, or like in Way Back just watching the highway fade through a child's eye in the way back of a family station wagon. Dan Grove's work demands and deserves visitation and revisitation. Spiegelman insists Groves has created a new poetic terrain with Bravara wit. I agree. And for the younger listeners among us today or those new to poetry readings altogether, don't worry if you miss the meanings on the first go-round. Instead, listen for the poet's ability to seduce a thought across a line, to play and to pun, to ride the crests and valley of meter, and sew it all together on poignant, delicate endings. Dan Groves is the author of The Lost Boys, published by the University of Georgia Press. He is a staff member at the Suwannee Writers Conference and is presently completing his PhD in creative writing at the University of Cincinnati. His poems have appeared in the Paris Review, Yale Review, Virginia Quarterly Review, Poetry, Drunken Boat, Unsplendid, and other noted journals. And not least, he can also complete the New York Times crossword puzzle faster than any man I've ever seen. I'm not kidding. What takes us a week collectively as a community in the main office, uh, he can do in about five minutes. The English Department and Loyal Blakefield are very pleased to welcome Daniel Groves to our campus and our community. My heartfelt thanks to President Day and Principal Marinacci for supporting this fine event. Please welcome Daniel Groves. A lot of these references, I've noticed, have become dated, maybe sooner than I anticipated. Um, and they're only going to grow more so. But this poem takes place in uh, the back of the station wagon that my parents had when I was younger. Um, and it was one of the models where there was the front seat, the back seat, and then what was called the way back which would pull up into a third uh, row of seating that faced out the back windshield. And that was often where, uh, being the youngest in my family, where I sat. Way back. <clears throat> Episodic family vacations. Only one still went along. The baby, whose own caprice, expansive, interior. Their outdated wagon became the seat of a stationary Aegon, express per minute revolutions vis a vis that plotted triptych. Dad, mom, son. Cruise control, the vehicle's automotive design that flipped up way back, made him turn his back on where he came from, which is where he headed also. 
as the impassive stare that met his had time permitted one to learn. My well shone. But Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, damn Sunday drivers, stalling, excuse me. I'll say Joseph's day, especially. <laughs> the old man, ingenuous, explosive, pulled away at last, out distancing that always close behind the father, farther figure. Adios, El Camino. The mini vanish age one day will leave us in the dust. Headlights began in great procession, clicking on. Recline from dim reflection, child, that long rehearsed spectacular total reckoning, hard and fast asleep, who saw it coming past, <clears throat> going past, past all recognition. Dad braked, cursed, and bore toward the exit, hugging the broken line. With the coming of spring, I'd like to read a poem uh, to kind of say goodbye to winter. It's called Penguins. Our feathered friends are foul of fairer weather, traveling minstrels winging back and forth. But frozen south of nowhere, their true north, these barking emperors in formal dress, a well-bred colony, patrol together a stark topography. Emptiness. The waddling feet, the rows of black and white, blotting a sheet of white. Only the tip of the iceberg. That comic belly dip and deathly cold impelled to sheer, headlong descent, as sovereign, as free as flight. The depths beyond the sounding of mere song. Any Jonathan Swift fans in the audience? <laughs> oh, come on. There's a few. <laughs> uh, there's a story about, there's a story about Dean Swift. Uh, walking uh, out with a friend, he noticed uh, a tree that had begun to lose its leaves. And he uh, said something to the effect that uh, when I go, uh, it'll be that way at the top first. Uh, and he was talking about kind of the onset of madness. This is about Baldwin, which uh, <laughs> I started to do at the end of high school. Uh, I mean, I was in my mid-20s. But, uh, it's called At the Top. Swift passing scream of sheer hot air, parting gone from scarcely there by a hair's breadth. Face that grins so long in the teeth of comb and winds, grown longer, blown dry, sucking breath. Each morning brings a brush with death, creeping beyond any reparation, Calvinist predestination, male pattern baldness, patterning a semicircle, unclosed ring, almost the perfect symbol of eternally renewed self love, unlucky horseshoe where, where else the almost counts as it repels all but ironic shavings and entails the omega of the alpha male's bewildering caprice. Ecstatic withdrawal from the world, magnetic fields withered not to be receded, curling crested waves receded before the dark abounding main. O vanity, what will remain? As in the fallout, I, brain case distressed, unlocked, no hair in place, no hair accounted for, uncrowned, uprooted, <coughs> stranded, Cut around my losses, greater every day. What will remain? Swept under rugs, shameless self-advertising plugs. These fragments shorn against the ruin of dues paid up and nothing doing. Teasings of time and space, white holes, big bangs, celestial, spe celestial spheres and poles. A bounty on my head, sprays, creams, and overblown comb over schemes through which fool captiousness, the will of the wisps, the naked truth still shines. And then, hair trigger pride, the pater paid at eagle eyed empty nester's spite, outliving full bodied barbarism, giving her suit suitors cruising by so stylish now, a bald faced lie. In a historical flip flop, round head, a restoration fop, vinyl, vinyl roof, or chrome bumper across. Loose clippings are a staple chief, security blanket. 
or good grief. O vanity, the mirror kills conditioned hope and miracles. The widow's peak puts none too fine a point on sharp, ingrown decline. Its call recalls each blushing bride to whom we, shock by shock, have died on its ascension towards a thick, blunt prominence. A bone to pick in martyrdom, where every pelt upon the lack of one is felt too deeply. A ridge too wide across, too bare with too high brow gloss, place of the skull. Indeed, too much, all flesh is coup de grace, light touch against the temples, Whisper rush that soothes them to the end, low hush that softens its own blow. The wind blows till we listeth, we'll rescind our last air, last two-bit remnant, stripping off glad rags, to grant our ever-fashionable wish, O vanity, to vanish. It's nice to uh, it's nice to see a part of town that I haven't seen before, especially one that's such a, a really wonderful spot, a really beautiful campus. And um, I lived in Baltimore uh, in the late '90s and early 2000s um, as a college student and afterward. And uh, I um, was presumptuous enough to write a poem about it, and I hope it becomes clear over the course of this poem that, uh, you know, it's not really about Baltimore, it's more about my distorted sense of it. Uh, and again, a lot, of, a lot of these places that I'm referencing probably aren't around anymore, or maybe aren't around, uh, won't be around for much longer, it's changed so much. And it's called The Stranger here. Um, it takes its title from the title of a book by Ogden Nash, who lived most of his adult life uh, in Roland Park, uh, an American poet, uh, famous for kind of Light verse uh, in the New York. You've probably read some of his poems, maybe without knowing. And it takes an epigraph from Frank Lloyd Wright, who was writing uh, a young former student of his who uh, had written him a letter saying he was going to move to Baltimore. Uh, and Frank, Wright, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright told him, uh, you know, against against the student's reservations to go, go to that benighted city. So that benighted city is the epigraph from Frank Lloyd Wright. Stranger here. Escaping placement, fleetingly, brick house. Funk follows form stone out of vacant blocks as row on row of more brick houses drowse in sprawling shade. The last car course click clocks in time to when her ships come in. The docks were bustling. Swart, sideburn, the common bores, unloaded wares for clipper common bores. Loaded nowheres. Broadway, too broad indeed, of memory, yoking past and present, witty or cavalier, failing what we succeed. Art fact, brick factory, and complicity with dream, our unincorporated city. Retropolis. Though where but this cohere, could all our incoherencies cohere? Such as the concrete underneath my feet and high abstraction, signs above my head, downtown and uptown, both the one-way street, the parallel, St. Paul and Charles, misled perhaps by mere book smarts, too many dead white males. My do-it-yourself projects upon historic structures, fallen, nearly gone. The will to restoration, which of course entails conversion also. Thus, the former fills a function, the cart behind the horse. That old line statesman, gentlemanly farmer, Lord Baltimore, could not provide for more, than, for more than meets the idling idealists today of Jacobite angel wrestling, holding sway through centuries of tension, Druid Hill, Greek Town, the steadfast Bromo Seltzer Tower, Domino Sugar, Big Town, Butcher's Hill, storefront Baptist churches, 24 hour Rite Aid, Beth Steele, the Cross, a higher power, up with the sun, clock punching, rhyme, meter, lyric opera house. Mechanic theater. Diversions. Horseplay. Hackwork. Arm in arm, these couples make a scene that made out worse decades. The monumental into charm city quietly declined. Perverse horror or pragmatism. 
Poe, and Peirce, that poor dispersed, as Mencken's bourgeoisie, ever mercurial, sounded off key, with cultish unitas unto the local heavens, blue horseshoe collar, aureole of looming lights for weaver, and lo, cow, before they took the field of memorial away and picked its carcass clean. Its soul, nevermore, the ravings carry on, no bardic songster, only carrion. Join the lost cause, beat a dead horse, drink at the hippo, if not hippocrine. My equivocation, mixing metaphors for this metapolis, moving between reed and chase, at eager, epicene epicenter, and backward, significantly, since age 18 from university. My 20s and mid the 30s, classic white marble stoops to conquer, an attic room, but 30s, mid the 20s, 40s, wait, I 40? The inner harbor's recovered womb. Through netherhoods of dome and spire, doom and aspiration, what prestigial detail remains of such original old glories, grandeurs, charm as monument, the antiquated anti queen? The odd wrought iron frontispiece on space for rent. The odd wrought iron star on the facade, remember, bears a load. But household god gargoyles, stone faced perseverance is only to keep up disappearances. Form follows function, will that is outlive its use. Though fretwork, grating, colored pane, and painted screen, fancy if useless, give perspective. Elaborate frames that show their strain. Crack the pipes, the imminent domain of fixer uppers, junk supplies our fix, the tone of bric a brac, or the tongue of bricks. Good building blocks that layer on layer are bored, martyred, mortarboarded, mortarboarded. We, pre we precast a spell from time and labor, Baltimore, be floored, dropping again to blame and riot. Well, one noticed visiting in those who dwell in this detropolis. An inverse pride in not being noticed. Suicide, like immortality, would draw too much attention. The national bohemian Natty Bo fades out with no retouch. Winking conspiratorially, man to man. Suspenders, dandy mustache, frothy can. The trademark properties condemned persist for fetishists and counterfetishists. Stung with nostalgia by some buzzword, um, by beehive sentimentality. Sickly sweet. Glazed over, overdone, over and done, done over. My parochial school of steep keeps the faith, invokes the absolute cataclysm. The holy trivia quiz, as it was in the beginning, shall be, is without end. Greek revival, drag queen Anne, flamboyant gothic, Georgian, French chateau, cart horse, iron horse, the iron man, carte blanche, broad irony. My B and O roundhouse, its trains of thought, however slow, linked up to a one-track mind to run, always on time, birth to oblivion. Golden, gilded, gilded ages hence. Into the turn, the backstretch, comes the nightmare, my railbird's dark horse, with a sense of show and place and loss. To find daylight across the bay to which, not yet, not quite, all are brought, the racing form, the poem, and I perfunctorily follow. Head for home. Thank you. I was going to try. Um, I read a couple of uh, shorter pieces that are uh, that are elegies. This first one's called "So Long." I keep my distance, watching the way you would, over nodding heads from a shaded parking spot, your burial in a corresponding plot. Underfoot, you may be understood, as one assumes a silence among the dead, reciprocal of what remains unsaid. United by indifference to any common ground to the last, conspirators almost, I save my breath as you save yours, one self is all told enough, if one too many. We shared, exchanged our handshakes, medium strength, and thereby held each other at arm's length. The party begins that quickly to party. 
still part and still a part of them, I cross myself as they do passing. Sorry for your loss. Keep busy. Keep in touch. We will and will not. Apprehensions out of tact. Then self-effacements turn to face this fact for which you are beyond forgiving me. If there was something to take away, a keepsake you meant for me. You meant for me to take this stance for so long. Objectivity. Distance. Now, six feet even, fathomless, skin deep. Our distance is the only thing we keep. And this is, a, this is another elegy, it's called the dog slide. A dog's life. A stay of execution. One last day, your day, holds every dog, then, as they say, or as we say, a new trick to avoid finalities implicit and destroyed. You have to be put down or put to sleep. The very dog who always fought to keep from putting down, despite our shouts, a shoe before its bottom sole was gnawed straight through and sat awake our sleepless nights to bark away some menace looming in the dark. No picking up the sense of all this talk. You only prick your ears to hear a walk, or else the ultimate reward, a car. God, tomorrow's ride. Well, here we are, right now. You stare at me and wag your tail. I stare back, dog -like. Big and dumb. Words fail. No more commands. Ignore my monologue. Go wander off. Good dog. You're a good dog. I never quite could master, anyway, the execution, as it were, of stay. by reading uh, the, uh, the first few sections of a longer poem that the book takes its title from called The Lost Boys. Um, <clears throat> Lost Boys are a reference to, to Peter Pan, as most of you probably know. Uh, but a, the metaphor that's developed throughout the poem is that of um, kind of the life of, uh, of a writer as uh, an attempt not to grow up. Um, and there's an epigraph from the play Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. Uh, it's a piece of dialogue between Peter Pan and Wendy, respectively. I don't know any stories. None of the Lost Boys know any stories. How perfectly awful. Um, Peter Pan bus line is uh, mentioned. It's a, you probably have seen it or heard of it. It's a, uh, it's a regional bus line that, that's run out of uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. When I was younger, and I think probably still, if you wanted to take a bus to New York City, which the character in this poem does, you either probably took a Greyhound bus or a Peter Pan bus. Section one, game time. I'm him, the little kid across the aisle, pipes up at every other second, mile after mile, and pointing out the pic of pictures on a dog-eared page as quick as dad can turn, is made the character reborn at every turn he would prefer to be. This used to be, or not to be an old man, is the only game for me. Has been since rides to school on that first bus. Detailed like Charlie Brown's shirt, or the fuzz of the bumblebee, that busy socialite. In black trimmed yellow. A melodramatic light, illuminating aluminum, cool green, as tomb dim dens around a TV screen. Where I, behind a one woman, one act, that girl. Deep seated, played to half distract myself. Poised for the next round. Bent to see the drawing, claim a new identity. I'm him. To say it was to fade it so, from any form performative years ago. Or peering out the window, I tried to scan the pattern, unrolled telephone lines, ran beneath crow's feet. A horizontal scroll, black against white sky, from 
pole to pole, seeming to fall and rise from my fixed look, which followed them as lines in my workbook, crackling with some secret message. I never quite made out. See, she is why, that girl, the one, the lost. I still replay that game, is why I take this bus today. Would long-term perspectives, worldly whys and wherefores, presage acting otherwise. Two, game to Genesis. From bus to bus, remote from any motive except the unacceptably emotive, I sit passive-aggressive as white flags Surrounding PR reps, my name is tags, are raised and inevitably deathly slow. We move towards some convention, some craft show, some, that time already, exposition of, here, my sample case, an exposition. Omissionary, lying face to face with her within a brief fallen grace period to love, to be loved, sigh, no game. I'm him, changed into I am I, and that was that. Self-taught self-knowledge we vowed to be true to. Uptight tautology sworn on our one unspeakable new name. De rigor mores, keeping things the same. O oh, heretofore inconceivable desire. O oh, regnant pause, conspiring to desire the child as father of the man. Distended, do. To make it neutral, never make it new. And thus to reconstruct our willful want, Eden from need that we may always want in kinds, no two-timing, no jealousies, no less this coital moral. Helices bid, Helices bid cell division, gametogenesis, turning from just a game to genesis, dating our bios by one summer eve, anatomy, with figments, make-believe, addressing us, what ifs, for instances. In X, existence's insistence is intense. And what, all told, does the past teach? a lasting predilection for pastiche. The fact becomes affect, then disaffection, emotion tranquilized in recollection. The tour de force becomes a forced detour, a tardy farce, an echologue. Once more, re-beginning, big lump in his throat, the Adam's apple. Finally, ripe to quote by memory his bit part, ripe to choose, apply, identify himself. He choose and choose it over. The eye, he said, on a whim, he was for good, seems just another him. The man-child at a dire past, this side of paradise he dies, a parasite. And she, per se, that prime determinant, seems impersonal, impermanent. Is this a joke, a test, poetic justice? How can it be? I don't know, it just is. And we, as such, were just not meant to be so damn sure of ourselves, essentially. Free face off. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Free face off. Turning back to the game from that poor outing, turned inside out by outpouring or pouting. Although the make believe that made belief in hearing us as kids herein gives grief. I'm him, informed by certain memories of I am I, our former certainties that had no need to play, which time proved wrong and may prove right again before too long. Meantime, the game, relocating, regaining losses if possible, but entertaining visitors, ourselves, impossible other, at once the definite article, an extrovert, accommodating, or, which, when internalized by me, is more like it or not. A worthwhile endeavor, if one may well inquire, does it end, ever? Or turn from page to page, comparative, arcane, when will the arc of narrative that hopelessly romantic the mind wills, the errant nights, the tilting of windmills, the damsel in estrus, the quixotic quester, the la man child who never asks, case them. Break off the endless round and roundabout, tell tale it straight from A to B, then out. To be then out, eh? When indeed. With her gone, I'm him, as cultivated whithersoever, whenever the game allows, can thrive. Armed with magazines, the keen to arrive, dead eyes gather, hunt to meet their match, the big game, blown up headshots. Just one catch, the heart throb set therein, reverse denotations, will tick us off to final detonations. We'll blow up in our faces, should we pass the mirror's fashion magnifying glass. Cover to cover, as prompt, as pro tem, as such precariously posed dilemmas. The newest image, 
good fun while it lasts if one recovers after total blasts. Yet the game allows as well for all our auto-autobiographical elect with gossip, comment, crossword clues, classic Caparez comeback, Kidman Cruz. No longer limited to the fine print conveniently, reflected in dark tint, the inky window of Greyhound, second lane over, down ramp, floats in sheer disdain of its newfangled canine streak, our man, the boy who never grew up, Peter Pan. And uh, just before I read this live session, I want to thank you all again for coming. Uh, you've got a wonderful audience. I appreciate your attention. Um, and thanks again to uh, the English faculty and everyone at uh, for being so welcome. Good luck on your practice. Section four, dogmatist and pantheist. Such are the options left our travel class, foregoing hamlets, leaving Western Mass for interstates, 84 to 91, 91 to 95, begun with age of reason integrity, delayed by inclinations, mid to upper grade slippery slopes, depressions, unforeseen resurface, resurfacings, construction, Intervene in media race, as traffic is no go, the most immediate race is better logo. The greyhounds, dogged, sleek, who leads the pack in hot pursuit around that oval track, like Wonderlands, not far from home, of Rabbit, the wiggly trickster playboy. Does he nab it, hounded by graying manners while en route, the eminence of grease, the flannel suit, the thrill of the chase, Manhattan, sport of Queens, Plus doggerel, ablaze on what he means. Or Peter Pan, his greenness, flitting fairy and takeoff, highfalutin, literary. On whom, as per derise of cursory ascension through the unit nursery, the cult of Mary via the law of Murphy, ever more virginal, ever more fay, I was raised to post man child demand that flights of fancy never, ever land. A pretty picture, still, the giant letters that dwarf it, a strange conflation of typesetters or archetype. Peter, the rock of Aegis, Pan, the age of rockets founded thereupon. The saintly usher of the great white way, betrayed by panic. Seder play display, unsung, arrow trajected, tragic heroes reappear, dispirited Pierrot's pantomimic, patrocentric talk of some pansexual cock of a walk, out of the air, but bound to heaven, earth, Goateed and sheepskinned, no pastoral mirth, pastoral history, nor cloud cuckoo perch for fugitive hours, years, at play, in church, stuck. Wait, our passage, long in doubt, resumes. Onward to Pan or Peter out. Thank you very much.